coming to the next part of the lecture in the same one day motion, uh, a point I want to discuss here a little uh, uh, in detail, um, how to get the distance in one day motion. If you recall in my previous lecture, I already gave you that there is no direct formula to get the distance. And particularly when you use your analytical expressions, what do you mean by analytical expressions? That any equation that is given to you, that is an analytical expression, with the help of which you may use either derivative or integration to get whatever information that you wish. Now, if I take one such case, I'll just show you in one day motion, only in one day motion, I repeat, reiterate, emphasize, it's only for one day motion. In one day motion, supposing the particle is moving like this along a straight line, at one point it may probably come back, say from B, it has gone, and maybe at C it will return. Likewise, the particle is likely to move. Suppose if in a given time interval between this and say a point D, I may ask you what is the total distance covered by this particle. Now the, if I ask you displacement, every time analytical expression is given, uh, final uh, dis uh, position minus initial position will directly give you the displacement. But distance you won't get like this unless, as I said, it is a unidirectional motion. That means it will not change, it will not come back. Therefore, you can directly take magnitude of the displacement to be same as distance. So there's no issue there at all. But in this particular case, there is a difference. And how to get that? Suppose if I want to know what is the distance covered from A to D, as I've already told you, you have to first of all identify identify where exactly the particle stops and reverses its direction of motion. I am showing it to you here. A to B it has done. Then B to C it has done. Then C to D it has done. So, if I want to know A, B, B, sorry, C, B, and this is C, this is D. So I give mod A B plus mod B C plus mod C D. I use that short term mod here is for modulus. So split the time interval. Now I am giving you the procedure. Split the time interval to find out the points where the velocity is zero. And for each of those intervals, any number of such cases you may get, for each of those intervals, you have to find out what are their displacements and take their moduli and go on adding, you will get the distance. That means the displacements must be added without any regard to the sign. That is how you are going to get the displacement. This is the theory. I am just giving you one example here that uh, x is equal to, this is the expression. Now as I said, I want to find out where the velocity is zero. You remember? So how do I get that velocity dx by dt? And I said I will uh, get that velocity expression. This is 3t square minus 20t plus 45. Uh, 3 is common in this, you can say t square minus 80 plus 15. This is your velocity. And what is it that I um, want to get from this? I want to get the time when the velocity is 0. So you point it to 0. This is the procedure. All right. Now, what will be this? Uh, you get uh, a quadratic equation. I think you can easily find out this as... Uh, t minus 3 and t minus 5 is equal to 0. That means t is equal to 3 or 5. So what is the expression that we have written? x is equal to uh, t cube minus 24 t 
plus forty five to forty square. Is it what I have written? <laughs> I forgot. Well, Bizer, I think uh, this is twelve uh, uh, t square forty five t plus ten. I think this is the expression. You may just correct it uh, when you look at because this is all extreme part. Now, this is the expression. Now, at t is equal to three, t is equal to five. You have to find out what is the displacement. Now, what do I do? First of all, till t is equal to three. That is, I want to get between x displacement between three to zero plus x displacement between five to three plus x displacement between. Five to any t you are interested. Now all depends on how to get the distance, and then what is that time in which you want to get the distance. I want to get the distance, say in this case, in t is equal to seven seconds. So it is the t I will replace it with the five to seven. So x three minus zero means what? X three minus x zero is what you have to substitute plus. X five minus X three. This is also has to be substituted, and X seven minus X five. Now you sum it up. As I told you, the moduli you will get everywhere plus plus plus. And once you add up all these things, you will get your distance here. Remember. So whenever you get Uh, the three steps that you have to know to get the distance in one day. When analytical expressions are given, first thing, obtain t when v is zero. Find displacements in those intervals. And uh, add the moduli of all the displacements. This is the simple procedure. Whenever you get an analytical expression uh, and associated distances, another uh, frequently asked questions is. Uh, suppose now I am asking you a question. I am projecting a body with you. It will go up and then come down. We know that. Suppose if I want to know what is the least distance covered. Now remember, I want to definitely tell all of you one important thing. In physics, why many people say physics is very tough? Uh, many are afraid to touch physics. I mean, I do not understand why. Uh, maybe the teacher probably gives you an impression that this is uh, uh, very tough. Don't maybe is probably because it is tough for the teacher. What is tough for any child? I mean, you tell him what it is. See, you have to be careful in looking at it. When the displacement is asked, you can't give distance. But when distance is asked, you can't give displacement. So therefore, I want you to be very careful when you talk of this. What is that? Uh, very time it is confusing in physics. They say minimum and maximum. What is the least distance? This is a very dangerous uh, situation. Uh, people say what is so dangerous in least, but you don't understand. You know, unless you work out the problem, you will never know it. So I am just looking at a case here. What is the least distance? Now it is variable at every instant. How can I get that? I want to get least distance of the covered by the body in one second. Now remember, they may also ask, what is the maximum distance covered by this body in any one second? Always, this is a repetitive thing. I always identify whenever he is asking least, least. You have to get the minimum displacement or the least distance. Then identify. Either minimum velocity point or zero velocity point. If it is symmetric on either side, you take a half the time interval on either side and then add the two displacements without any sign convention. What do you mean by that? I'll tell you now. 
now here. Here I want to get the least resistance. So what do I do? So I go like this, like this. So this particle, I am putting it here. Uh, you said in one second. So this is the zero velocity. Before attaining zero velocity, it will cover half second. And after attaining zero velocity, it will descend cover for another half second. Mind you, in both these cases, magnitude of displacements is same in both the cases. So, when the body descends uh, from the topmost point, then what is that uh, displacement that you get of g t square? What is this answer? g by 8. Obviously, on this side also it should be g by 8. Now, you want to get, if you want to get the displacement from this point, it has gone up to this and come back to this, therefore displacement is 0. But distance is g by 8 up and g by 8 down. So, total is g by 4. Therefore, the least distance covered by any body in any one second is always equal to g by 4. Maximum if they ask you. This is the maximum velocity. Your projection velocity itself is maximum. So here itself you have to take one second and find out whatever is the u. For example, I want to know h is equal to u t minus of g t square. So it is u minus g by 2. You can't get this unless u is given. So this is important. I hope you understood this point here, right? So they may ask in several cases, what is the minimum distance or the maximum distance or what is the distance covered? Because well, as I told you, distance covered you can get uh, with analytical expressions with the example that I have given uh, a little while ago, okay? Now, this is one part of the story. Now, whenever... Uh, you talk of uh, a tub I project a body up with you I project a body down with you and I drop a body let this side be H in each of these cases, I will find out what is the time of flight in the first case, the second case, the third case. Time of flight in the first case, you know, projected up from a height h. Then you know how to write this expression. u by g whole square plus 2h by g plus u by g. And then what is that uh, second scenario time of flight? This will not change because the very factor is same except this. That is okay. Now, but what is T3? U0, this is 0, this is 0 means what? 2H by G. Now, I mean, you can make some kind of a jugglery that you come across in some of these books. Suppose you multiply T1 and T2. It is in A plus B form and A minus B form. What do you get? A square minus B square. So, you get a T1, T2 is equal to U square by G square plus 2H by G minus U square by G square. This gets cancelled. But 2H by G is nothing but T3 square. This implies T3 is equal to... Remember, I have just tried to give you this example not for mugging up. You need to understand how to write this and then get the appropriate. Then how many are you going to memorize uh, and store in your brain? And you have to reproduce all this at the time it is required. It's very, very difficult. We have all of us have, you know, individually limited space. So let us make use of these spaces uh, rather properly. You understand this point now? So this is how they can ask the questions. Okay? All this, as I said, in a 1D motion and the gravity we have given you a few examples and all that. Now another very important aspect in kinematics is, see you have studied motion under gravity, you have studied uh, 
velocity, acceleration, displacement, position, etc. All. Let us look at how to uh, represent these things in graphical form. Now that is very important for us. We will look at uh, position time graph. The position time graph. That means I take okay and uh, I take T, this is my position. Now, suppose uh, uh, it is a straight line here. What do you mean by this? How do you interpret this? At any time, the position is not changing, straight line. That means the particle is at rest. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Look at this case now. I am now taking a, let me, I mean very simple case I am giving, it's a, a straight line, making certain angle with x-axis, x-axis is your time axis here, the y-axis the ordinate is your position, right? So now you have got uh, at an angle theta, this is how it is increasing, okay? Now, one very important thing that you should understand in all these graphs. If I want to get the slope of this graph, this is delta r, this is delta t. This interval is delta t, this is delta r. And the same angle theta, because it doesn't differ, it's a straight line. So, I can write uh, tan theta as delta r by delta t. This is nothing but the slope of the graph. Uh, in my earlier lectures, I have indicated that if uh, delta t tends to zero, this becomes dr by dt. This is what we call as instantaneous slope. This is called instantaneous slope or this is called instantaneous velocity. Now, instantaneous slope in position time graph is called velocity, instantaneous velocity. Now, this, what is this? This is the uh, uh, finite uh, values. Delta R by delta T will give you average slope and average slope means average velocity, right? So, how do I write it here? This is what I call as average slope and this is delta r by delta t and instantaneous slope is dr by dt. So this is, uh, how do you get the slope with the tan theta? I am sure you are aware of it. Now so sometimes the graph can be given like this. When t is equal to 0, the position is already present, not 0. That's all the difference. Otherwise, it makes no difference. Slope uh, here also will give you instantaneous velocity, etc. And in this case, instantaneous velocity and average velocity are one and the same. If these two are one and the same, that is called uniform. So it's a unidirectional motion when you have a straight line. I hope you have understood this. Sometimes in the graph, you may come across a negative slope. Simply it is a negative velocity. That must be obviously with reference to uh, some other uh, origin, right? So this is a negative velocity. That's how you have to remember. Now. In all these cases, I have shown you only, first I am going to confine my attention only to position time graph. Now, the next case of position time graph, I am giving you, let us say it's a parabola, or position time graph. Okay? 
what does this indicate? It is not a straight line, therefore it is a non-uniform motion. First interpretation is non-uniform motion. That means no velocity is a variable. Now if I want to know in such cases what is the velocity at point A, simply draw a tangent and get that angle that will give you velocity at this point. Therefore, V at A is equal to tan theta A. I told you, in a position time graph, slope is nothing but velocity. If it is instantaneous slope, you will get instantaneous velocity. If it is average slope, you will get average velocity. So, V A is equal to tan theta A. Now, so look at this point, B. B, if I do, I will get what is velocity at B? It is obviously tan theta B. Which velocity is more? Obviously, if I am asking you which slope is more. So, the slope of B is more. Therefore, you write your first inference is VB is greater than VA. That means with the time velocity is increasing in one day motion, this is a case of positive acceleration. This is a case of positive acceleration is clear. Now, instantaneous means I can draw the tangents and get that. How do I get the average velocity between A and B? Simply join these two points. and uh, get the slope of this hypotenuse. That is nothing but your average velocity between these two points. Is this clear to you? Oh, everywhere, <coughs> positive velocity is increasing, increasing. Everywhere velocity is positive, it is increasing, increasing. So positive acceleration. Next case I will take. Look at this case. Again, positive velocity, positive velocity, positive velocity. Only difference is the velocity is more here and the velocity is less here. A, B. This is V, B. This is V, A. And the answer, if you see, V, A is greater than V, B. So, this velocity is now uh, average if you want, you can get like this. But what's the difference? Positive high value, positive low value, positive low value, it may become zero. At uh, this point, velocity is zero because slope is zero. So, this is a case of negative acceleration. Previous case that we saw was a positive acceleration. Okay. Now look at this. I go with, I'll give you these things in nutshell yet again. Look at this. Suppose it is coming like this. Almost zero velocity. Everywhere velocities are negative. Negative small, negative more, negative more, negative more. So, minus 3, minus 5, minus 8. So, if the velocity is negative, your acceleration is also negative. If this velocity is positive, your acceleration is positive. So, negative velocity increasing or positive velocity increasing, the value of the acceleration is in both the cases. So, you have a positive acceleration case. I want you to understand this is how the velocities, remember this is all the time positive position time graph only. So you will get a positive acceleration here. Is this okay? Now another case I will show you. What do you get here? Again, negative acceleration, neg uh, velocity. 
and uh, very high negative value, less negative value. So, minus 30, minus 20, minus 5, 0. Therefore, this is a case of retardation or negative acceleration. So, you have to understand that uh, I will give you these things here. Now, this is a case of positive acceleration. And just now I have given you another positive acceleration case. This is a case of positive acceleration. Now, negative acceleration, retardation. This one. This one. This is A negative. This is also A negative. So position time graphs I have tried to give you. When do you get positive values? When do you get negative values? Etc. Okay. Now various things that you can look at this. Position time graph. For example, I am now taking a case I am now taking a case where, uh, for example, look at this, here is a dropped body. Construct a position time graph for this. How do you do that? Here, velocity is positive, acceleration is positive. So, for this case, if I plot That's how I do. Positive value everywhere increasing starting with zero. Okay? This is how uh, I can do. Alright? Now, if I take a case, I project a body up, this goes up and comes down. How do you represent this in a position, time, Initially, retardation. Initially, retardation. That means this one, retardation. And it comes back to the same point. This is position time graph for a body projected up and down like that. Now, suppose I hope this is visible to you. I am now giving the body projected up from the top of a tower and uh, if uh, this is H, I want you to draw position time graph for this. So same as this, likewise it will go. Displacement is negative, remember, if it reaches the ground or below the point of projection. So, this is how you can give, this is your so-called height of the tower, that's how you have to interpret it. Okay? Now, if I take a, a special case of a ball, that is of course ideal, I am dropping it. It will touch the ground and come back to the same level. Never do you come across a ball of such nature, in, remember? So, if I do that, it keeps on moving up. There are so many bounces. And I want you to draw, I want you to draw uh, a position time graph for this. You have already done that before. Likewise. So, again, you say it is the same height. It continues on and on and on. If you go realistically, what will be realistically? In the next point, it will go to a lesser height. 
so on and so forth. Likewise, likewise. These are all position time graphs of a so-called elastic ball bouncing to the same height without losing any of its energy at uh, any stage. Now, position time graph, another very interesting thing that you can see. For example, there is a person who walks rhythmically uh, at a constant speed of one foot per second. For every five feet forward he moves, he will move back three feet. Five feet forward, followed by three feet backward. Suppose it was a culture. And uh, there is a pit. This means a huge pit there. He is not aware. Which is say at a distance of uh, say 12 feet. When, at what time does he fall into the pit? I want this answer to be obtained graphically. Now well, let us see how to do that. Remember one foot per second is uh, maximum speed, right? Now, I am giving here, likewise, take a very lengthy thing. Uh, we will take uh, 5 feet, 10 feet, uh, you want it as 12 feet. Now, this may be 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Ignore the scale part of it. I'll try to give the sketch of it. First thing, once he comes to this point, this is like this. This is a constant uh, speed, uniform speed. So he'll go like this. But in the next three seconds, he'll come back to two feet. So this is five comma five. So you have uh, five seconds and five feet. And by the time he comes here, time is 8 seconds, but distance is 2 feet. Now again, what will happen? 8, 13, and then you have 7. So, 13 seconds, 7 feet. And similarly, uh, 16. 3 seconds and 3 feet backwards, therefore this is 4. Now, this is 21, 5 seconds. Now, 4 plus 5, 9. Now, 3 feet backwards, therefore this is 24. And 3 means 6. Now, next, uh, 29 seconds. Right, 6 plus 11 feet, 11, now 3, 8, uh, 32, 3 feet backwards. Now, 12 feet, 4, that means 36 seconds and 12 feet, that's where he will fall into the pit. Now I want you to understand this should be straight line everywhere because you can't stint speeds whether forward or backward. That's how you have drawn this. Now this is a position time graph. This person will fall into the pit in 36 uh, seconds. Can you give me what is the distance traveled by this uh, person? After all, whether he's moving forward or backward, he's walking for a total time of 36 seconds at a constant rate of 1 foot per second. Therefore, total distance that he traveled is 36 feet. Right? That is how you have to get the answers. Okay? Now, sometimes they give you, instead of position displacement, they will say, Distance time graph. Distance time graph. 
Now, how do you do that? I'll uh, try to give that the body is projected up and then it comes down. How do you draw this? Body projected up, likewise, it becomes zero. Now, distance cannot be less during the motion. So, that is how you have to draw the position time graph. Very important. And that so called ping pong ball now uh, projected up, coming down, projected up, coming down. How do you draw that? Likewise, you go on extending this graph. This is as far as distance is concerned, remember that. These are distance time graphs and the previous thing that I discussed was uh, position time graph. Sometimes if you take the initial position to be zero, they are nothing but your uh, displacement time graphs also. Now, let us look at VT graph, velocity time graph. Now, velocity time graph, I'll give you a few cases. Now, this is uniform velocity. This is velocity are positive, but everywhere uh, the constant slope and uh, constant slope means in velocity time graph, slope is acceleration. Constant slope means constant acceleration. Here A is zero. Now here, negative slope. So negative, but constant. Instantaneous acceleration you can get. Uh, average acceleration you can get. Same as I have discussed before. Now for example, instead of this, if I am giving like this, what does this indicate? It's a VT graph. Here, there is one slope, this is another slope, and you know that this is point B, this is A, this is VB, and VB is greater than VA. Uh, no, sorry, uh, A. Acceleration is the slope. You will get acceleration here, therefore, AB is greater than A. This is a case of variable acceleration. You remember, we tried to work out some problems from this also, uh, as far as analytical expressions are concerned, okay? Likewise. Now, so how these velocity time graphs are plotted for drop to body, Drop to body, how do you get velocity time graph? Velocity goes on increasing, you know, it is acceleration likewise. This is velocity time graph. Now, uh, this is a case where this goes up and then comes down. How do you draw? Now, uh, you look at this. Initially, because you are dropping the body. So, zero velocity, velocity is increasing. Here you are projecting the body up. I am projecting it up and now then it comes back. So, how do you plot this? <coughs> uh, one point. This cannot be a curve but a straight line by constant acceleration, all right? Now, in this case, can you tell me how do you plot that? I am first projecting it up, then projecting it down. So, how do you, for example, this is velocity, you have certain value, the value goes on decreasing, becomes zero, and then it becomes so, if this is uh, increasing like this, then the decreasing like this, then increasing. You see, is that the way that you have to draw this? One way. In this, why this is wrong, you see, 
here you have what? Velocity positive and acceleration negative. In this case also velocity positive. But what happens here? It goes up and comes up. So velocity is reversed. Therefore, this is not the correct graph. How to draw the correct graph? I will tell you. You extend this. That will give you the correct graph. Okay? Now, this is time of descent. This is time of ascent. And the total is what is known as time of flight. Uh, I think uh, I'll put a stop to this here and we'll continue in our next lecture.